Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be looking at uh, creating a sort of door that'll act as a level transition, and um, also adding some keys to it so that uh, you know you kind of need to have a certain amount of keys to be able to pass to the door. So um, this is a request from one of you, so I hope this helps. Um, all right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is in the content browser, we're going to right click create a blueprint class of type actor that we'll call bp underscore key alright and we'll open this up now all I'm going to add is well first I'm going to add a scene component that we'll call root and I'll just drag it and drop it to get rid of that other default root uh, next we'll add a static mesh and this will serve as our key alright and for now I'm just going to make this a sphere and I'm going to choose the material sphere uh, just because it's centered nicely. Uh, next we'll add a sphere collision which um, we can just call you know kinda overlap maybe uh, because it'll just be the area that we need to overlap in order to kinda you know pick up the this um, sorry pick up the key. Alright so now I'm gonna change the sphere radius here to 150 so it kind of you know creates a nice bubble around it and I'm gonna untick hidden in game uh, just so that you guys can see it but you know for your own game make sure that hidden in game is set to true All right. okay so next we're gonna go to the event graph and we'll just delete some uh, all the default stuff and we're gonna click on our overlap right click go to add event and add on component begin overlap okay now off of other actor we want to cast to our character so in this case it's our third person character and then we want to do something so what we're gonna do is um, we need to go back to our character and open them up and we're gonna add a variable called uh, number of keys okay and we'll change this to an integer so this is simply gonna represent the number of keys that we'll have and uh, I'm just gonna add a quick little debugging um, key here so that we can press it and kind of see at all times how many keys we have uh, so you know you don't have to do this but this is just to help us visualize so I'll get the number of keys and just plug it in like so alright so we'll go back to our BP key and basically what we'll do is when we overlap with it we want to get the number of keys from our player and then we want to set the number of keys and what we want to set it as is the current number of keys plus one. All right, so we're picking up one key essentially. Now, after we've picked up the key, all we want to do is just say destroy actor, and we should be good to go. Okay, so there's our key, right? Our key's all fine and dandy. It's done. If I drag it out, here it is. If we press play really quick, I can press one, and you see I have zero keys. Now, when I overlap it, now I have one key, so so we so we see that that's working. Uh, next, we need to create the level transition blueprint. So we'll right-click, create another blueprint of type actor that we'll call BP underscore uh, level transition. Okay, so we'll open this up, and again we'll add a scene component called root, um, just to get rid of that default one. Now we'll add a static mesh, and this will kind of serve as like you know the door to the next uh, level and I'm quite literally going to choose the the door the SM door um, this is provided you know in the starter content so if you have that enabled you can use it uh, then I'm going to go ahead and add a box collision and we'll just again call this overlap okay and I'll kind of um, you know reposition our door a little bit maybe right there ish and then we can take our box, move it up there maybe, um, and then we'll just resize everything. So maybe I'll say X at like 50, Y at 50, um, Z 100, that might be all right. Maybe drop it down a bit. And then, you know, you can just maybe pull it ahead a little bit. There we go. And, you know, just size it to whatever works for you. Okay, so now let's go to the event graph, and we'll delete all this stuff. And again, we'll take our overlap, right-click, add an event, add on component begin overlap, 
And now we want to cast to our character. So again, our third person character. Then we want to get their number of keys. Okay, and we want to do a check. We want to check if the number of keys is greater than or equal to some value. Now this value we will promote to a variable and we'll call it uh, required number of keys. So this will be the number of keys that you need to have in order to you know, kind of pass through to the next level. So we'll make this editable so that you can edit it from the, um, you know, from the editor. Uh, and then we'll take this return value and say branch. Okay, so if it returns, if it returns true, then what we want to do is um, we want to take away those keys. So we'll set the player's number of keys. Okay, and we'll set it to the value of our number of keys minus the required number of keys. Okay, and then we'll just plug that in. All right, now after we've done that then we are going to call the load uh, level, or no, not load level, open level, okay? Now we'll, for the level name, we'll also make this editable, so we'll right click, promote it to a var variable uh, called level name. Oops. There we go. And now again, from the editor, you'll be able to specify which level you want to open to, so make that editable, compile and save, and now um, you know, we can drag it out and here it is. Right? Here's our, our little level transition blueprint. Um, so as you can see over here in the default, you can specify, you know, how many keys you need. So maybe we could say two, right? And then the level name. So just as an example, we'll create a level really quick. So I'll right click, create a level that we'll call test one. So now we'll open that level and just hit save. Alright, so now we're just in this empty blank level, so let's add some stuff really quick. We'll go to lights, add a directional light, um, a skylight, go to visual effects, add a atmospheric fog, add a post process, and just set it to unbound. Uh, and then we'll go to all classes and add the BP sky sphere that comes with um, the uh, starter content. And then for directional light actor of the sky sphere, we want to choose the directional light we just added. Okay. And so now, last thing, we'll just add a little platform to stand on. So we'll drag in um, kind of a box geometry, and you know we'll scale the scale the box extent out like so. And then, last thing we need to do is just make sure that we have a player start. All right, and this is important because if we don't have a player start, then um, when you spawn or when you load this level you'll just be like you'll just fly around like this little camera that we are right now uh, so yeah just make sure you have a player start um, and that should be good so so we've got this level um, and we'll go ahead and go back to our other level really quick and we'll click on our door and for level name we'll call uh, we'll type test one now this is very important uh, to make sure that you get the naming exactly right because it is case sensitive and um, just everything has to be right otherwise uh, you'll encounter some errors so uh, let's just save everything and we'll actually add one more key okay just so we can be able to pick up two and go through the door so let's try this out um, or one other thing really quick let's go back to our level transition and if we don't have um, if we don't have enough we'll just print to the screen you know you don't have enough keys exclamation point and then we can make it red maybe kind of as a warning or whatever all right so we'll compile and save and if you wanted you could uh, instead of just printing a string you could maybe you know create uh, a widget, right? And this widget could be like a, a little message that pops up on the screen saying, you know, hey, you don't have enough keys, go find them or whatever. So you could do that as well. Um, okay. So we'll go back now. And uh, if we press play, we run up to the door, right? You don't have enough keys, right? Oh no. Uh, so we'll go, we'll pick one up, right? And we'll go, oh, we still don't have enough keys, right? So now, um, if we press 1 
uh, you know, you see we have two keys in our kind of key inventory, I guess. And if we pat, yeah, <laughs> that happened pretty suddenly. But basically, you know, we had enough keys, so we passed through. Now we just need a way to pass back through. Okay. So we'll open up test one really quick, and we'll drag our level transition in. Okay. And the number of keys, let's say three this time. And for level name, we'll uh, type third person example map. All right. Then we'll take some of our keys, put them in the game. You, know, you can you can hold Alt and then drag around to just duplicate them really quick. All right, so there we go. So let's press play, and now we can walk through and boom, we're here. Cool, right? Um, so now just to show it all in action, we'll go back to our third-person example map, press play, and we can pick up both of these, go through pick up all these, go through, and then it could just be, you know, an endless loop. You could just keep doing that. Um, now, one thing to notice, or note, I should say, is that um, when you transfer between levels, it doesn't, like, none of the variables that you have um, on your character uh, carry over. So it'll always reset to its defaults. So just to show this really quick, I'll add one more key. Okay, and that's poor positioning and you know I press play I run over these and now I have I have three right so when we go through this door it should only take away two but now when I press one you see we have zero and the reason for this is um, just as I said you know when you transition between different levels uh, th your your variables don't um, kind of maintain their their uh, values I guess so what you need to do if you want to you know kind of keep those is either use a save game or use something called the game instance which is uh, what I'm going to show you how to do here so we'll go to project settings um, we'll go to maps and modes and go to game instance class okay and we'll create a new game instance so we'll create this and you can put it wherever you want um, I guess we'll just put it in the content browser um, and we'll just call this you know or test game instance okay so open that up so now inside of here right all you do is you just add the variables that you want so we'll add a variable um, called uh, just player keys okay and we'll change this to an integer okay just like that now all we need to do is go to our level transition okay and before we open the level we need to first cast to that new game instance, so test game instance. Okay. Now the object coming in, we want to say um, get game instance. Okay. So it's kind of a built-in functionality here from Unreal. And then we simply want to drag off and say set player keys. Okay. And we'll set it to this number of keys value. Okay. So that's all we need to do in the level blueprint. Um, let's just go back to our third person character and we just need to on event begin play we need to call to the game instance and get that value so we'll say cast to um, test game instance okay again as our get game instance okay and we will get player keys from the game instance and we'll say um, set number of keys which is of course the number of keys on our character so let's press um, let's try this out really quick so if I press play right I have three right and if I go through I now have one so you see it persists and so um, there you have it right there's a you know kind of a basic example of how to use keys to pass through doors um, I might show another tutorial kind of on more using, um, you know, more specific keys. But with that, thank you for watching and uh, like or subscribe if you like the video and we'll see you in the next one.